subscribe to our channel for latest video series on gain UGC net and more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss an update on any latest video. For more information you can visit our website or call on the numbers below. So now we look at Z transform of some common signals, some basic signals. So we are going to use them here and there again and again. So we are looking at them once. We are going to make a similar table as we did for Laplace transform of some basic signals. And uh, we are going to use their Z transform directly from the table. So first signal that we are going to look at is unit impulse. Unit impulse sequence which occurs at n is equal to 0 only. So from definition we know xz is going to be summation n is equal to minus infinity to infinity del of n into z minus n. Now this del of n is going to occur for only one value of n which is n is equal to 0 and sample of this signal at n is equal to 0 is going to be z to the power 0 or 1. Now if you see at the z transform of this signal it is 1 so ROC is going to be the entire z plane. Right, so Z transform for del of n is going to be 1 with ROC entire Z plane. Right, now next signal that we are going to look at is unit step sequence. Unit step sequence U of n. Okay, so uh, now for this unit step sequence, uh, we have already discussed this for a to the power n U n. If you just put a is equal to 1. We saw that for a to the power n u n, z transform that we found was z z to the power minus a with mod z greater than mod a. Now if you just put a is equal to 1 in this sequence for u of n, we can see that z transform is going to be 1 by 1 minus z inverse or z by z minus 1 with ROC mod z greater than 1. Okay. So uh, we put all the basic signals in a single table so that you can just refer this table whenever you need to uh, see the uh, Z transform of these basic signals along with their ROC. So we already discussed for unit impulse signal Z transform is going to be 1 and ROC is going to be the entire Z plane all values of Z. For uh, U of N unit step signal unit step sequence it is going to be 1 by 1 minus Z inverse or equivalently z by z minus 1 and ROC is going to be mod z greater than 1. Similarly for uh, this this unit step signal which occurs for n equal to minus infinity to 0 expression for z transform is going to be the same right but uh, ROC for this signal is going to be opposite ROC is going to be mod z less than 1. Now if you are shifting this del n with uh, by minus m your z transform is going to shift by minus m you're going to look this in uh, while well, we discuss properties of z transform so uh, roc is going to be all z again except zero except zero why because if if m is greater than zero or infinity if m is less than zero see this is uh, because if this is a negative power then it would be infinity to some positive power which is not defined mm -hmm. and if this is a uh, m is a uh, positive number greater than zero number then z cannot be zero because in that case zero to the power minus infinity is not going to be defined okay so we're going to see this whenever you're shifting a signal by m this uh, the z transform is going to be multiplied with z to the power minus m right now we have seen z transform for this signal also it is going to be 1 upon 1 minus a z inverse or z by z minus a roc is going to be mod z greater than mod a same expression for this signal also 1 by 1 minus a z inverse or z by z minus a roc is going to be mod z less than mod a now if you multiply this signal with n that is going to result in multiplication by n in uh, time domain is going to be differentiation in z domain okay so what is going to happen you're going to obtain minus z d by z dz of xz okay so we're going to look at these properties for now you can just see if you multiply the signal with n in time domain it's blah blah it's it's this z transform is going to be differentiated with respect to z and multiplied with minus z when you perform all these operations, you are going to obtain az inverse upon 1 minus az inverse whole square or 
AZ upon Z minus A whole square with the same ROC, same ROC mod Z greater than mod A. Right. Similarly, for this uh, other expression, even if you multiply this expression with N, you are going to obtain the same expression AZ inverse upon 1 minus AZ inverse whole square or AZ upon Z minus A whole square. ROC is going to remain the same mod Z less than mod A. Right. Now, if you are multiplying the signal with n plus 1 a to the power n u n, see uh, z transform is going to be a linear operator. So, what are you going to do? You are just going to add this function with this function. You take the LCM and add these two functions. You are going to obtain something like this z upon z minus a whole square. Just add these two. Okay. This is just addition. This is going to be a linear operator. Okay. So, you just add. ROC is going to be mod z greater than mod a. Now, if you look at cos omega naught n, see you have to follow the same procedure, just express it in terms of Euler signal. Then find Laplace transform, uh, I'm sorry, z transform. You're going to find this expression z square minus cos omega naught into z upon z square minus 2 cos omega naught into z plus 1. ROC is going to be mod z greater than 1. So, I am not performing these operations right now here. Okay, you can just express these signals in terms of Euler signal, then calculate the z transform. You will find a similar expression. You can just try this by yourself. Uh, actually, we are not going to use a lot of z transformation of these signals. We are not using these signals in discrete time a lot. Mostly we are going to be concerned with these above signals only. That is why we are not deriving their Z transforms. Uh, though you, if you want to verify, you can just verify on your own mod Z greater than 1. Okay. Uh, when you are multiplying this cos signal with R to the power N, that is with some magnitude, then what is going to happen? Magnitude is going to come along with cos. So, you are going to have z square minus r cos ohm naught into z upon z square minus 2 r cos ohm naught into z plus r square and r is going to be mod z greater than r. Okay, z square minus r cos omega naught z upon z square minus 2 r cos ohm naught z plus r square. Similarly, for this one you are going to obtain r sin ohm naught z upon z square minus 2 r cos ohm naught z plus r square with ROC mod z greater than r. Uh, for this signal we have already performed, we took this in example. So, we obtain 1 minus a to the power n z minus n upon 1 minus a z inverse with ROC mod z greater than 0. Right, so uh, these are some common Z transform pairs that you may encounter here and there. So you can just use their Z transforms directly along with their ROCs. Now we look at some properties of the Z transform. What happens when you're performing shifting in the time domain? What happens when you perform shifting in the Z domain? What happens when you're multiplying with some constant? When is the Z transform going to be differentiated? and so on. So, we have already seen that properties of jet transform are going to resemble very closely with the properties of Laplace transform. Uh, still, there may be one or two properties that may have some variation. So, uh, let us see that. First property that we see is linearity. Okay, what is linearity? If z transform of x1 n is x1 z with ROC r1 and z transform of x2 n is x2z with ROC r2 then then for a1 x1 n plus a2 x2 n z transform is going to be a1 x1 z plus a2 x2 z and ROC is going to be r1 intersection r2 greater than r1 intersection r2 okay that is it is going to contain both of the roc both rocs of these two signals separately okay this is linearity property next property that we see is time shifting time shifting what is time shifting property 
if z transform of x n is x z with r o c r then if you are shifting in time domain if you provide a shift of n not in time domain then your z transform is going to be multiplied with z to the power minus n not x z and what happens to r o c r o c is going to be r intersection of 0 mod z greater than 0 less than infinity why did this happen because of this factor we multiplied this function with z to the power minus n not right because of this factor we have this intersection okay so uh, what happens is if you are shifting if you are providing a shift of minus n not in time domain similar power similar power along with z is going to come in your z domain okay for example if you are providing a shift of minus 1 what is going to happen this is going to be z inverse x z r o c is going to be r intersection mod z greater than 0 see because for this function this uh, mod z needs to be greater than 0 okay if you are shifting by plus 1 that is x n plus 1 then you are going to have z into x z r dash is going to be r intersection mod z less than infinity it needs to be less than infinity right only then this is going to converge okay so what can we say we can say that from these two equation looking at these two equation what can i say i can say z inverse is can be can be called unit delay operator unit delay operator why because when i multiplied the z transform with z inverse it produced a delay of one unit in time uh, domain right and z can be called z can be called unit advance operator unit advance operator because multiplication with z of the uh, z transform advanced my signal by one unit advanced my signal in time by one unit okay see if you just remember s inverse that is 1 by s and s in laplace domain this 1 by s corresponded to time domain integration time domain integration when we multiplied with 1 by s in laplace domain we were actually uh, we were actually performing time domain integration we, when we multiplied with uh, s in laplace domain we were actually performing differentiation in time domain okay but that is not the case in z domain okay when we are multiplying with z inverse we are actually producing a delay of one and when we are multiplying with z we are actually producing advancing the signal by one okay so this is one difference that you need to note now next property that we are looking at it is multiplication by multiplication by z naught to the power n now if Laplace transform for x n is x z with r o c r, if you just multiply this signal with z naught to the power n, what is going to happen? This z naught is going to be z naught is going to come in the denominator, and r o c is going to be mod z naught into r. Okay, so in particular, what happens in a pole or zero at z is equal to z k in x z moves to z is equal to z naught into z k. Okay, r o c is going to expand or contract by the factor mod z naught. See why did this happen? I multiplied z with z naught in this expression of uh, z transform, right? So what is going to happen? A pole or zero, whatever, uh, at some some instance is going to move is going to shift that is why roc is going to expand or contract okay so there is one special case in this also though one special case if you multiply it with e to the power j sigma not n if you are multiplying your signal with a j sigma not n what is going to happen similar similar this is z actually we have put this in place of z so this is going to be x e power minus j sigma naught z okay and roc is going to be the same why because this is a complex this is a completely complex number this is not going to affect the magnitude and when we talk about roc we just talk about mod of z this is not going to affect the mod so all poles and zeros in this special case are simply rotated by angle uh, ohm naught right and roc is going to be unchanged roc depends on magnitude 
now next property that we see is time reversal time reversal so if xn is having a transform xz then x of minus n is going to have transform x1 by z roc is also going to reverse okay so a pole or zero in xz at z is equal to zk some uh, some point moves to 1 by zk okay so this means this relation indicates inversion of r reflecting the fact that a right sided sequence become left sided if time reversed right so it is obvious if you just time reverse a sequence if it was left sided it's going to become right sided that is why we have inverted the roc accordingly okay next property is multiplication by n multiplication by n now what happens when you multiply by, uh, with n in time domain it is going to it's going to obtain differentiation in z domain okay if xz was uh, the initial z transform of xn then when you multiply the signal with n in you're going to obtain differentiation in z domain minus z into dxz by dz roc is going to be the same okay we have looked at a similar property in the laplace domain also so you now need a lot of explanation next property that we are looking at is accumulation accumulation or summation okay so if lap uh, the transform of xn is xz then if you just sum this signal then you're going to obtain multiplication with 1 by 1 minus z inverse in z domain okay see this is simply convolution with the unit unit step signal right we know this uh, when two signals are convoluted in time domain they are actually they are going to be actually multiplication this uh, z transform going to be multiplied this is actually the z transform of unit step signal so when you are uh, summing a signal which means you are convoluting a signal with unit step signal their z transforms are going to be multiplied right so uh, one one thing that you can note here is that comparable laplace transform operator for integrator uh, okay so this is write it down so for summation we are multiplying the z transform with 1 by 1 minus z inverse and for integration we are uh, multiplying with 1 by s so comparable comparable laplace transform comparable laplace transform operator for integration if we had a continuous time signal then it would have been 1 by s okay now the next operation is convolution so this we've already seen right this is going to be the same as laplace only then if we are convolving two signals in time domain we are going to multiply their z transform and roc is going to be intersection of two okay so this is actually the uh, one advantage of using z transform for which we are studying z transform okay uh, so we're going to just uh, sum it up sum up the properties using a table so for convenient reference you can just refer the table to see the properties so we quickly sum up all the properties suppose we have sequences x n x1 and x2 n with transform x z x1 z and x2 z so uh, what does linearity property say if you are adding your superposition plus homogeneity if you combine these two then uh, uh, z transform for this expression is going to be a1 x1 z plus a2 x2 z and roc is going to be r dash is going to be r1 intersection r2 if you are shifting in time domain then you are going to obtain multiplication with z to the power minus n not in z domain and uh, roc is going to be r intersection mod z greater than mod z uh, mod z greater than 0 less than infinity 
if you are multiplying with z uh, not to the power n in uh, this time domain this is going to result in division by z not in z domain and roc is going to be mod z not r this is going to contract or expand by z not okay this is just a special case of this one in place of z not you are going to place e to the power j ohm not right uh, roc is going to remain unchanged because this is a complex number completely it has no mod no mod means no change in roc if you reverse in time you are going to obtain x1 by z and r dash is also going to reverse uh, invert okay because uh, this is going to convert a left sided uh, left sided signal to right sided signal then roc is also going to invert if you are multiplying by n in uh, time domain this is going to result in differentiation in z domain roc being the same accumulation or summation in time domain is multiplication with 1 by 1 minus z inverse in z domain okay and roc is going to be r intersection mod z greater than 1 fine and convolution is going to be multiplication in z domain roc being intersection of the two so now we look at proofs of these various properties that we have seen uh we going to look at proof of most of the properties for one by one so firstly we going to verify time shifting property okay we verify time shift property how is it going to work let's see so we need to verify that if you are shifting by n not in time domain it is going to result in multiplication with z to the power minus n not in z domain okay so uh, by definition laplace transform of x n minus n not is going to be summation from minus infinity to infinity x of n minus n not into z to the power minus n if you just change the variables if you just consider this n minus n not as m then what is going to happen this is going to be summation see if you put the limits uh, here for n limits for m are also going to be same so this is going to be summation from minus infinity to infinity x of m in place of n what do i put m plus n not so this is going to be z of minus m plus n not now see this z uh, to the power minus n not is independent of the summation where summation is with respect to m so i can just take it out this is going to be summation m from minus infinity to infinity x of m z of minus m now if you just look at this expression carefully this is actually the z transform of xm so this is going to be z minus n not into x z right now see the, because of the multiplication by this term because of this term z to the power minus n not for n not greater than 0 additional poles are introduced at z is equal to 0 and will be deleted at z is equal to infinity similarly if this is a negative number then what is going to happen additional zeros are introduced at z is equal to 0 and will be deleted at z is equal to infinity therefore we cannot include the point z is equal to 0 and z is equal to infinity from the roc therefore what is going to happen if initially roc was r now new roc cannot have these points cannot have points mod z is equal to 0 or mod equal to infinity that is why we have excluded these two points because if any of these values uh, for z occur then roc would not be defined right uh, next we verify multiplication with z not to the power n property that is multiplication with z not to the power n with the signal is going to result in division by z not and what happens with the roc roc gets multiplied with z not right so by definition if you try to find out if you try to find z transform for this signal what is it going to be summation from minus infinity to infinity z not to the power n x n z minus n right so what can i write it as i can write it as summation from minus infinity to infinity x n into 
z upon z naught to the power minus n. Now see, now look at this expression carefully. When we have z here, when we have z to the power minus n here, we say that this is equal to x of z, right? When we now we've just changed the variable, this variable got replaced by z by z naught. So what can we say? This is equal to x of z by z naught. Right. Now see what happens. A pole or zero which was occurring at z is equal to z gain x z moves to see. Uh, okay, I'm going to write it better. A pole or zero, whatever, at z is equal to z k in x z. That is a pole which occurred at this point in x z. What happens to it now? This is actually, if you see, this is actually scaling in uh, this uh, variable, right? Scaling in z domain. So what happens to that pole? It moves to z is equal to z naught z k. Every point is going to be multiplied with z naught, right? So it moves to z is equal to z naught z k. And and what happens to the ROC? ROC expands or contracts depending on value of uh, z naught. Expands or contracts by the factor by the factor mod z naught. Therefore, therefore. What happens to ROC? New ROC becomes mod Z naught into R. Okay, this is why we are having this change in ROC. Okay, fine. So this is uh, what our property was. Now look at the next property. So next we uh, verify multiplication by R n or differentiation in Z property. That is multiplication with n in time domain is going to result in differentiation in Z domain. The ROC remaining the same. Right now, from definition, you know that x z is equal to summation from minus infinity to infinity, x n z to the power minus n. Now, what do I do? I differentiate both uh, sides with respect to z. Differentiate both sides with respect to z. What do I obtain? I obtain d x z by d z is equal to summation n is equal to minus infinity to infinity. There is no term of z here. So directly I am going to differentiate it. What do I obtain? Minus n x n z to the power minus n minus 1. Right. Now if you take this minus z minus sign and 1 z here. What do you get? Minus z d x z by d z is equal to summation n is equal to minus infinity to infinity. I am writing these two terms together, right? Now, if there was x n here, we say that this is the z transformation of x n. Since now you have n x n, so you can say that this is z transformation of n x n. Okay, so there are, if you just find uh, z transformation of n x n, you are going to obtain minus z d x z by d z, right? And R O C is not going to change. Okay, R O C is going to be the same. Fine. So uh, next we try to verify the convolution property. Now we are going to verify the convolution property that is if we are convoluting in time domain we are going to obtain multiplication in z domain. Right. Now see you know by definition that output for a system is given by convolution of the two signals. How is this convolution defined? This is summation from k minus infinity to infinity x1 k into x2 of n minus k. Now what do I do? If I try to find out y z that is if I try to find out z transform for this y n what is going to what do I need to do? Summation n minus infinity to infinity of this complete expression. Multiplication with z to the power minus n. I'm just changing the order of limits. I take this summation outside. Since this uh, term has only k, I can just keep it outside. If I take this inside, this is going to be summation n minus infinity to infinity. Okay. x2 n minus k into z to the power minus n. 
Now, if you look at this term inside the parenthesis, inside the bracket, it is in the, in the last expression, this is the Z transform of the shifted signal x to n minus k, right? If, if this expression had only x to n, this would have been the Z transform of x to n. But this is the Z transform of x to n shifted by k. So, what can I write? I can just write this as, this is it going to remain x1, k only. This I can write as, due to this shift by k, I am going to obtain Z minus k here and z transform of this signal right now if you look at these two terms together see what can i do i can write these two terms together right x1 k into z z to the power minus k into x2 z now if you look at this expression this is actually the z transform of x1 z so what do i obtain x1 z into x2 z with an ROC that contains the intersection of these two ROCs because we are multiplying okay if a 0 1 transform ca cancels a polar further ROC of yz may be larger so we conclude that ROC is going to be greater than intersection of these two ROCs fine so this is how we verify the convolution property now the last property that we are going to verify is the accumulation property accumulation or summation property so uh, what does this accumulation property say summation of k from minus infinity to infinity x k is going to have transform 1 by 1 minus z inverse x z okay or z by z minus 1 into x z so now uh, what are we saying is suppose this is a new new signal y n which is equal to summation k is equal to minus infinity okay sorry this is these limits we have taken wrong these are summation k is equal to minus infinity to n okay xk i am assuming this is a new signal so i can write this as convolution of xn with un okay already we have seen that convoluting any signal with unit step signal gives the summation of that signal or integration of that signal now using the convolution property what can you write yz is equal to xz into what is the z transform of un 1 by 1 minus z inverse or z by z minus 1 right this is what accumulation property say now if you look at the roc it, in, it is going to include the intersection of these two okay right as we have seen in convolution property so what is going to be the roc it is going to include r intersection ROC for this signal U of n is more than greater than 1. Right? This is what we this is why we are having such an ROC for this signal. Okay, so uh, now we look at uh, various questions using properties of these Z transform as well as uh, the transform of basic signals that we have learned. So the first question that we look at is you have given a signal Xn equal to 1 by 2 to the power n un plus 1 by 3 to the power n un and you are required to find uh, z transform xz and sketch the pole 0 plot with the ROC. Okay, so we are using the linearity property. I am assuming that these are two separate signals. So 1 by 2 to the power n un is going to have z transform z by z minus 1 by 2 with the ROC mod z greater than 1 by 2. And 1 by 3 to the power n un is going to have z transform z by z minus 1 by 3 with ROC mod z greater than 1 by 3. Now only if these two ROCs have some intersection, have something in common, if they overlap, only then you can find the combined ROC. So obviously these two ROCs is going to intersect, going to have some overlapping. So xz is going to be z by z minus 1 by 2 plus z by z minus 1 by 3. If you just take LCMs and solve it, you're going to obtain 2z into z minus 5 by 12 upon z minus 1 by 2 into z minus 1 by 3 with common ROC mod z greater than 1 by 2 because uh, overlapping for these is possible when mod z is greater than 1 by 2. Okay, so if you just look at this expression, it has two zeros occurring at z is equal to 0 and z is equal to 5 by 12 and two poles at z is equal to 1 by 2 and z is equal to 1 by 3. 
if I try to sketch its pole zero plot as well as ROC. So uh, I've already told you we look everything with respect to. Okay, so I am going to plot this zero at five by twelve. Then we have a pole at one by three. Then again we have a zero at five by twelve. This is one by three, and again one pole at one by two. And ROC is going to be mod z greater than one by two. That means outward to outward to this circle. Okay, this is real part of z. It's imaginary part of z. So this is going to be the pole zero plot as well as ROC for the given signal, right? Now look at the next part for the similar question. Similar steps you have to perform. Now the signal that you have got is one by three to the power n u n. Plus one by two to the power n u of minus n minus one. Now, if you look at this carefully, this is a two-sided signal, right? This is going to occur for positive values of n. This is going to occur for negative values of n. So, uh, since we have studied properties of ROC, ROC for this signal should be a annular ring. Uh, let us see. We are again using making use of the linearity property. Z transform for this is going to be z by z minus one by three. With ROC mod z greater than one by three. ROC for this signal is going to be minus z by z minus one by two. The ROC mod z less than one by two. Now, since these two also have overlapping, right? They uh, ROC they have some common intersection points, so. We can obtain combined Z transform, which is going to be Z by Z minus one by three minus Z by Z minus one by two. Again, if you just solve this, you're going to obtain minus one by six Z upon Z minus one by two into Z minus one by three. Now this has a zero at a z, z is equal to zero and two poles at Z is equal to one by two and Z is equal to one by three. So if you just sketch it. You're going to have a zero occurring here. Then you have two poles at one by three and one by two. Okay, and ROC is going to be where is the ROC going to lie? ROC is going to lie between one by two, oh sorry, one by three and one by two. It's going to be one by three. This is going to be one by two. So if you try to sketch the ROC, this is how it is going to look like, lying between the two poles, right? Okay. Now look at the last part for this question. They've given x of n is equal to one by two to the power n u n plus one by three to the power n u of minus n minus one. Now see. If you try to find out Laplace, oh, sorry, Z transform for this uh, this part, see what is going to happen. If you look at Z transform for this one, it is going to be Z by Z minus one by two, with the ROC mod Z greater than one by two. Similarly, Z transform for this part is going to be minus Z by Z minus one by three. With ROC mod z less than one by three. Now see these two ROCs have no common point, no intersection. Okay, they do not overlap. So there is no common ROC. Therefore, x z is not going to exist. Does not exist. See why did this happen? Because this was a right-sided signal. But this starts from this. This has this has minimum term as one by two to the power n. Now this this one by three to the power n u minus n minus one is a left-sided signal, but this does not start before this signal. Okay, so therefore these two signals, this is not forming a proper two-sided signal. Their ROCs do not overlap, so their XZ for this signal is not going to exist. Right. So uh, now we look at the next question. We are going to solve this question using properties of Z transform. We've already verified all the properties of Z transform. So this question basically combines, basically combines properties of Z transform as well as the basic knowledge of the signals that you have. Uh, we've already seen basic tra Z transform pairs. Now we're just going to combine. 
the properties of Z transform. Okay, so we start with the first part. So you know that Z transform of del n is 1. ROC is all Z complete Z uh, plane. Now if you apply time shifting property, then what is going to be the transform of del n minus n naught? This is going to be Z minus n naught. Okay, and what is going to be the ROC? Mod Z greater than 0 if n naught is greater than 0 and mod Z less than infinity if n naught is less than 0. Right? Similarly, look at the second part. So, we know that transform of U of n is Z by Z minus 1. Right? With ROC mod Z greater than 1. Again, you apply the time shifting property. Then transform for U n minus n naught is going to be Z minus n naught into Z by Z minus 1. Okay? Which can be combinedly written as z to the power minus n naught minus 1 upon z minus 1 and what is going to be the ROC 1 mod z greater than 1 less than infinity okay why because we have we've included this mod z less than infinity because we do not want z to take value as infinity otherwise this function is going to be undefined right now look at the next part so for a to the power n u n we know z transform is z by z minus a with ROC mod z greater than mod a. Now, we have just provided a shift in n, right, shifting in time domain. What happens when you provide a shift of plus 1? You are going to get multiplication with z. So, this is going to be z square by z minus a. And ROC is going to be mod z greater than mod a and less than infinity for similar reasons, okay whenever you are multiplying with z you do you are going to perform this same operation look at the d part it's we are going to use the time reversal property so transform for u of n is z by z minus 1 mod z greater than 1 using the time reversal property transform of u of minus n is going to be 1 by z by 1 by z minus 1 which is equal to 1 by 1 minus z and ROC is going to be mod z less than 1. Now you look at this part carefully. See when we calculate z transform for u of minus n minus 1, we get a similar expression with the with this ROC. But expression for u of minus n is different. It is not the same. Okay. That is why u of n minus uh, u of minus n minus 1 and u of minus n are two different signals. Okay, opposite signal for u of n is actually u of minus n minus 1, not this signal because this occurs for value of n is equal to 0 also. Okay, this is having an extra sample. Fine, now look at the next part anyway. So, uh, again we are going to use time reversal property. Z transform for this signal is z by z minus a. With ROC mod z greater than mod a. If you use time reversal property, you are going to get 1 by z upon 1 by z minus a or 1 by 1 minus a z with ROC mod z less than 1 by mod a inversion, right? We discussed this whenever we are going to reverse in time, ROC is going to invert. Fine. Now look at the next question. So they are asking you to find the z transform of these sequences. First one is n a to the power n u n and the second one is n a to the power n minus 1 u n. Basically you have to make use of the different properties that we have learned and find the z transform. So already we know that z transform for a to the power n u n is z by z minus a with ROC mod z greater than mod a. Now if you use multiplication by n property multiplication by n what is going to happen this is going to be minus z into d by dz of z by z minus a right this is what we have discussed if you just perform this differentiation you are going to obtain a z by z minus a whole square also we know that roc does not get affected by this operation right now look at the second part what happens if if you uh, See what you have got n a n minus 1 u n. Now see if you just if you just differentiate with respect to a 
why we will dif differentiate it with respect to a because see what happened this this signal the signal was same the signal was same as this one except for division by a right so what did we do we just differentiated its laplace transform with respect to a right so if you just, uh, just differentiate what do you get z by z minus a whole square with roc mod z greater than mod a right why did we do this because if you just differentiate with respect to a on both sides if you just differentiate this equation this equation okay the z transform of this one with respect to a on both the sides okay i'm just going to write what equation i i Okay, if you just differentiate this equation on both the sides with respect to a, you are going to get this. Okay, you, you can get this. Fine. So, uh, this is how we are going to solve uh, problems on Z-transform. Next, we are going to look at inverse Z-transform. Similar In a similar way as we looked at inverse Laplace transform, there are several ways to find inverse Z-transform.